So over my shoulder is an LG 75 inch 4K 120 Hertz independently LED backlit TV model number UN8570 PUC. Had a little hand note here. Now it is a very, very good TV, especially for the next generation consoles, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S and X. That is primarily the reason I purchased it back in October 1st of 2020. While it does offer some very rich colors, some very inky blacks, as well as some very good contrast levels, and overall very accurate picture reproduction in both movies and 3D media, such as video games. It does leave a little bit to be desired out of the box, as with all TVs, and definitely needs to have its settings optimize. That's what we're going to do here today, Stallions. Let's get it. All right guys, step one, we're gonna take our magic remote, you know, a bit of a marketing gimmick name there, but this remote is pretty magical. I mean, you can point on screen like an old uh, Nintendo Wii, you can talk to it. It's Bluetooth, you can use it as a universal remote, which I do have a separate video that will be linked in the description below, where I go over how to link things like sound bars, TV set top boxes, Roku's, surround sound systems, basically anything. So I have three devices being controlled with this one remote, not to mention you can actually control a PS4 or 5 with this remote. Can't game with it, but you can actually browse the menu with this D-pad here. That's pretty cool. So getting into the settings, you're gonna press this cog icon over here, and we're gonna go down to all settings over here because we wanna mess with everything. We wanna leave nothing stock over here. So first of all, I do recommend that you register your television online with LG on their website or fill out the product card and mail it in snail mail style if you're from the 50s. So that way you can protect your investment and actually engage your warranty. Now this bad boy retails for about $1,000. I say about $1,000, I've seen it as low as $800 50 and as high as $1,300. When I locked this bad boy in, it was 33% off on Amazon. That was part of the reason I pulled the trigger. And she was out the door with shipping to my house, this 130 pound behemoth over here at about a grand well worth every penny of it. So you do have all these interactive videos and user guides and whatnot, but over here in software update, you can turn on uh, automatic updates. It won't interrupt your programming, your movie or anything when you're Netflix and chilling. It'll just pop up with a very small box at the bottom, lets you know, hey, an update is available. Would you like us to start? And you can select yes or no. So I do leave that on, or if you wanna manually check for updates, you can do that here. It's gonna tell me I'm up to date, awesome. TV power sound. This is all personal preference, but it plays a little chime when you turn the TV on and off. I don't like it. High contrast, this has nothing to do with the actual image or picture quality. This is just in the menus. So again, if you are hard of sight, you can actually read uh, what is on the menus. Grayscale, if you're a little bit color deficient, this can change it to a more black and white tone. Inverting colors enhances the visibility of some items on the display screen. And again, closed captioning is if you are uh, hard of hearing. Now over here in general, this does have AI or artificial intelligence as it does have LG's WebOS operating system on it. It is a, it is a fully smart TV. As you'll notice here, I have all of the AI features turned off. I don't want it controlling my brightness. I can do that myself. I don't want it selecting my genres because I change that up every other day. And I don't need any assistance with the voice recognition. I use the voice recognition constantly to search for YouTube videos and Netflix. Just out of the box, default settings. I've never needed to register my voice or anything like that. So skip all of that. Now in the location tab over here, I would recommend keeping all of this off. It doesn't need your location as this isn't a cell phone. You're not using it for GPS or anything like that unless you travel with your television out in front of you or something. So location, I would leave all of that off. Home settings, I recommend turning all of these off. Promotion, no thank you. Animation, gonna pass on it. Auto launch, I'll launch myself. Now additional settings, this is quite useful over here. If you can't see the uh, pointer icon when you turn that on, I left it at the default, which is medium. It works for me, but you can change the size. I think it would be kind of nice if you could also change the color and maybe the shape of it to like a nice cool crosshair or maybe like a human finger. Settings help, I like to leave this on. That is basically these display boxes that you see uh, each time you hover over a option. You get a description of what it actually is, very helpful. All right, menu transparency. As you can see, this menu is kind of uh, transparent. You can see my Fire Stick interface behind it. I like that. Screensaver, I like that as well. When it's a static screen for a while, this is very important. If you have an OLED or QLED style model from LG, one of their high-end flagships, you wanna leave that on because instead of having a static image, you pass out with a game on screen and you have, of course, you know, your map in the game and your, your HUD, your heads-up display. 
could create burn-in. By having a screensaver pop up, it's changing a screensaver image every 30 seconds or so. That might save your buns. No signal image, basically when there is no registered image through the HDMI or component cables, it'll give you a little screensaver. So in power saving mode over here, I do recommend turning this on as when you have had a device that has been not used for quite some time, it will automatically turn itself into standby mode to reduce power as this is a 75 incher, she's power thirsty. Just realized I was standing a little bit too far in front of your guys' view of the screen here, my apologies. Live Plus, I like to leave this off. It's basically just a uh, constant moving tile of things that they think you might wanna watch. Quick Start is awesome. So it's much like leaving your PlayStation or your Xbox in uh, standby mode or sleep mode as opposing, opposed to turning it completely off. It will draw more power from the wall constantly, more static power when you're not using it, but it fires up a lot quicker. Standby light is literally just that. It's that LED light on the bottom of the screen that will illuminate whenever your TV is in standby mode and then turn off when the display is powered up. So advertisement, basically you have an advertisement ID associated with your account. This is pretty typical and it seems like LG is pretty transparent with the fact that they do sell your uh, advertisement data. I mean, all companies do that. But we can limit that by ticking this right here. Do not sell my personal information. I would recommend turning that on. Again, that is in general tab, additional settings at the very bottom. Moving on to connection over here, pretty straightforward. This is the model of the television. It is an 8570 PUC. I actually do believe that they no longer make this particular model as I did buy it in October of 2020. I do believe they have a very similar model now. Uh, this one, if available, will be linked in the description below as I do strongly stand behind it, but they have a newer model that's the same retail price, but slightly better. Apparently it has a better LED backlight to it. But this is where you're gonna set up to your network as this is a smart TV. And I do recommend using the smart TV features when it comes to installing applications like uh, you know YouTube, Twitch, Amazon Prime, uh, this little fireplace screensaver that I throw on to soothe me after a hard day every once in a while. Why? Because, well, that saves space not having it run on your console and whatnot. Not to mention the console applications for like YouTube and Twitch on the PS5, they're pretty janky and not great. So I actually prefer just to do it for my smart TV. Not to mention you can browse with voice, which is really cool. So over here in sound, I will say the built-in speakers into this TV are actually pretty good. Although I would not recommend anybody anybody uses the built-in speakers in a TV or monitor. They are hollow, tinny, virtually no bass, no stereo spread because all the speakers are jumbled up in the middle. They don't sound great. Um, as you can see here, I'm currently running a sound bar. I do have surround sound, but they have not been set up in this house just yet. I need to find out how I'm gonna run the wires, crawl my ass inside the attic and drop down speaker wire and whatnot. But I do have a 5.1 surround system that was set up in my last house. But the built-in speakers do sound good because it has Dolby Atmos and it actually sounded like a soundbar, a soundbar built into the TV and it actually did have a little bit of bass um, to where it sounded rich and full for a TV. I got to caveat it with that. You're much better off going with a soundbar or surround sound. I will have my soundbar and my surround sound set up Linked in the description below if you guys want to check it out. And Dolby Atmos is blacked out because I'm currently hooked up to a soundbar via an optical audio out. As you can see, I am out of optical, but you can also go HDMI arc. You can also connect to Bluetooth devices if you have Bluetooth speakers you want to connect to. I could also use my optical soundbar and my internal sp uh, TV speakers, but I don't want that. I, I don't want the TV speakers being used at, at all. I would just like my my sound system working. And since I am using an external sound source with the sound bar, I have all my uh, equalizer and sound mode set up via that. So you cannot go into mode settings over here and mess with bass, treble, mid, stuff like that. Now over here to what you guys really give a crap about would be the picture settings, right? Energy savings is basically going to reduce the backlight. It's gonna reduce some of the vibrant colors. It's basically gonna give you a less good picture quality at a little bit of electric savings. Now me personally, I don't really think I'm gonna go bankrupt or have to take out a personal loan or sell a kidney because of the electric, the electric bill that my TV is causing me. Aspect ratio, this is a widescreen 16 by nine wide ratio. Leave it in that. You are gonna see different settings here depending on what HDMI port you are using. This has separate settings for all four of the HDMI ports, which is good because if you want your Xbox looking one way and your PS5 looking another. So again, because you make these picture settings, you'll have to do it for each individual HDMI port. They're not universal amongst all of them, which I think is good. You can target different settings for each device you have plugged in. Now I do have the backlight at 100%. Now, 
This does get relatively bright, but not as bright as I would like it to. It is an independently LED backlit, meaning it is not an edge lit LED panel that only has LED backlights around the outside. It has several individual quadrants or sectors that will illuminate or de-illuminate as needed. Now, that is not as good as an OLED or a QLED when it comes to those pitch dark blacks and ultra realistic vibrant colors. However, um, it is much better than an edge lit LED or even just the traditional all-in-one LED. So backlight, I do have at 100%. Same thing with the contrast. You will get the best HDR experience where you have the most contrast between the lights and the darks with the contrast at 100%. Now brightness, I do have that at 50% because when you increase the brightness, what happens is the image begins to look a little bit washed out. It's not a very pretty experience. So leaving the brightness at the, de the default of 50, but having the backlight and contrast make up for that by being maxed out, or even if you were in a uh, constantly dark room, I have some pretty good natural sunlight here during the day. That's why I prefer to have the backlight at 100%. Yes, it draws more electricity. Now sharpness over here, this is a bit of a mixed bag. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this bar with my magic remote over here. You can uh, adjust it between zero to 50 over here. I do recommend the sweet spot right there in the medium, uh, right there in the middle of 25. If you go a little bit overboard with the sharpness, it's gonna look a little bit artificial and not natural. Everything's gonna look too crisp. Say for example, me standing here, I would look like I am completely not in the same room, like almost like I was Photoshopped into my background or something. Now color, this is also a bit of a mixed bag here. I have it at 65 personally. You can go up a skosh to about 70 or so. I prefer it in the 65 range because when you go super, super high, everything looks like Fortnite, so to speak. It's very, very colorful. Uh, and almost cartoonish and doesn't look natural. You'll notice that a lot more when you're watching movies or TV shows, live motion, you know, um, you will notice, well, that guy looks like he's orange and he's not like spray tanned. I don't know what's going on. Now, tint and color temperature, please, for the love of gosh, leave these at zero right there in the default. Uh, if you adjust tint, it's actually going to mess up your RGB or red green, blue, red, green, blue color spectrum, which would be good if it was a monitor or TV that wasn't accurate out of the box. This display actually looks pretty darn good. So do not mess with the tint whatsoever. Color temperature, this will adjust between warm on the Kelvin scale or cool on the Kelvin scale, which will give you more of a rich, warm vanilla look. For example, that light that I have over there for a little bit of YouTube ambiance is like a warm, rich light, or you have bright, cool blue light, kind of like my ring light over here. So leave that default. Everything's gonna look the most natural as it was meant to be seen. Advanced controls, absolutely. Dynamic contrast. So I have played around with this extensively. When I say extensively, I spent probably six to eight hours, my first day I bought this TV, staring at the monitor with different content playing, trying to get these settings dialed in. Leave it off. Dynamic contrast tries to take over your settings and basically choose what they think is best for each and every situation and scene. So when a scene transitions from indoor to outdoor or whatever, they change the settings and it doesn't look like a very natural transition whatsoever. So leave that off. As it even says there, optimize contrast setting based on image brightness. If an image is supposed to look bright because it's outside, let it be bright. If it's supposed to be a dark scene because you're creeping around a dungeon, let it be dark. Dynamic color over here, adjust color and saturation for a more vivid image. So I personally do like this, I have it on high because what happens is when you have it off, all the colors look kind of muted and kind of muddled and muddy. As we're on high, boom, brightens up the sky, everything looks crisp. I personally like dynamic color. Uh, super resolution, basically what this does is if there's an image on screen that's lower resolution, so maybe 480i or something, it will try and dynamically upscale that to a crisper image. Do not do that. I do a lot of retro gaming. I have a Sega Genesis um, Tower of Power right there in the middle. Uh, if I try and play that with that setting on, it will look horrendous, worse than the original did on a CRT TV because it is trying to make everything super crisp, even if it's not supposed to be. So if something's supposed to look a little jagged and retro and vintage, let it be itself. Now, this is an awesome, awesome feature that LG includes this apply to all inputs, which we're going to do right now. It'll take all your settings uh, besides advanced and picture options, but all these main settings up here and apply them to all four of your HDMI ports, your component, your AV out, uh, and also the TV itself. So when you're just watching content on the actual smart, smart TV interface, so you don't have to go through each and every HDMI port separately. However, if you want that, because you know, you want your Xbox looking one way, PlayStation looking another, 
you can set up each um, HDMI port individually. Also, another thing to keep in mind when you are setting up your PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series S or X, you need to go through all of the HDR video modes in the settings to make sure that your TV is matching and color graded and your HDR is aligned with the settings on your TV and make sure that your TV is in HDR game mode bef before you enter that um, TV calibration in your console. A lot goes into this audio and video stuff, but there really is no need to worry. Just subscribe to Gamer Heaven and you're good. All right, down here in picture options, we have a little bit more to tweak. We're not tweakers, but we're gonna be tweaking here today. So noise reduction, I would leave this either off or auto. I would test it out and see what you like. Me personally, I like it auto, but basically if you try and select one, it's gonna be applying that setting all the time and images look different. So it's not really ever gonna look as it should. So I just leave that on auto. I think they do a pretty good job. I think LG's auto looks really good. Same thing with the MPEG noise reduction as well. What this is gonna do is whenever there is a little bit of fuzz or noise as they call it, from digital video signals, it'll automatically boost up the clarity. Looks pretty good. Now this one, I'm gonna be 110% honest with you guys. Smooth gradation over here, I left it medium because I cannot tell what it does. I've read the instruction manual. It says jaggies. I don't know what the hell a jaggy is. I've looked at still shots, I've looked at motion videos, and I cannot tell this making any kind of a difference, so I just leave it at medium as opposed to high or off. Black level, I would leave that on. I have to because of the video settings I'm on, but basically leave it on auto. It's gonna do its best to work its HDR magic for you. Motion, uh, real cinema over here is actually a pretty interesting little feature. It adjusts the frame rate of your TV to match the content that you're watching. So most movies, most cinematic Hollywood movies are uh, traditional movies are about 24 frames per second, which seems low and it is, but it gives you a very cinematic frame by frame kind of look. And then obviously us gamers, we like to see things at at least 60 frames per second or higher. Motion I care, I leave this off because it's trying to adjust my brightness uh, automatically. I like to do that manually. Once I set my settings, I know that that's what's best for my needs and my room, the lighting of my room, the viewing angle that I sit at on my couch and all that stuff. But you can mess around with this and turn it on or off. What it does is it'll adjust the brightness by analyzing image movements, so on screen, to prevent glare and reduce energy consumption. This is another very interesting one you guys might have to play with a little bit, and that would be true motion. I leave it on natural because to me, it does look just that the most natural. What it does is it displays fast moving content smoothly and clearly. Now this is different than game mode. I do recommend whenever you play on any TV, you turn it on game mode. That generally gives you the highest possible refresh rate and looks the most fluid and smooth. With True Motion, it's doing this all the time. So not just a game mode, but it's the entire picture mode is creating everything in a very, very fluid motion because with these big TVs, a lot of times, you know, anything over 50 inches, so definitely the 75 are over here, what happens is there's so many pixels trying to move at once that when something fast blurs across the screen, sometimes you get screen blur or even worse, some tearing or some juddering. Very, very noticeable, takes you right out of the immersion and actually can make you kind of give you a headache to watch. Um, so if you are getting any of that, come in here and mess with your true motion settings to uh, either cinema clear, smooth, or you can even go to user and set up a custom value for de judder and de blur. Me personally, I just leave this at natural and it seems to be the best for me. So we're back over here in picture. Now we're gonna go down to additional settings. Eye comfort mode, adjust color temperature to automatically reduce eye strain. So I wish they had a schedule mode for this where just like your cell phone after 7 p.m. or something, it'll limit the blue light because what happens is blue light, that really bright, crisp blue light actually reduces the natural melatonin that your body produces and makes it harder for you to fall asleep. So generally that's why I say, you know, don't watch TV before bed, just read a book or something like that. Um, not that any of us really do that. I watch YouTube usually till I pass out. But what this will do is basically take out a lot of the blue light and just show you some of that warm, rich vanilla light. Basically just shifts everything to the warm end of the spectrum. I leave it off, but it would be nice if they had in a future update, if LG's watching, probably not, but if they are, uh, with a future patch or update, if you could add a schedule right below here, people would probably use that a lot. I know I would. HDMI ultra deep color, I leave this on for all four of my HDMI ports. Now keep in mind on this TV and a lot of the flagship TVs, only one or two of the HDMI ports, it's two on this TV, are rated for 4K 120. The other two are only rated for 4K 60 or 1080 120. So I have my Series S and my PlayStation 5 obviously hooked up to the ports 
that are 4K 120. Instant game response. This is kind of a game mode. So in combination of setting this to game mode, which we're gonna do in just a minute here, minimal delays, cracking or interruptions, basically just trying to give you the most fluid gaming experience possible. I leave it on for all four of my HDMI ports. This is an interesting one. So this is specific to LG televisions from what I've heard. Filmmaker mode is a mode that they have where certain content dynamically will change your settings to match what the filmmaker, the director, the producer wanted his film to be seen like on your display. So it knows what TV model you have, what movie it is you're watching, and it'll change all the settings. But from what I've noticed in my testing, it gets really dark. I don't mean the programs you're watching are dark, like Harry Potter, Deathly Hallows, you know, things are getting kind of cryptic here, but uh, I mean, the image itself gets kind of dark, guys. So I, that's why I leave that off, but I would experiment with it, mess around with it. Um, I continue to evolve these settings. I'm constantly tweaking with the settings in my TV. So now I've got the PlayStation 5 on, and if we hit the cog icon over here, it's gonna pull up my little sidebar menu. And as you can see, I'm in HDR game mode. And then game mode over here will give you the fastest refresh rate, the most fluid experience. That is what I leave it on for my consoles, the Xbox and the PlayStation. And then my Fire Stick 4K or any kind of a set top box, like a Blu-ray player, I would have on HDR cinema. But you wanna make sure that your HDR is engaged because that will greatly improve your picture quality with those dark blacks and the most vibrant colors. But my best advice for you guys would be to set up for your personal needs, your viewing angle. You know where you sit in your couch or on your lazy boy? What kind of lighting do you have in your living room? Do you keep it pitch black or do you have a lot of open windows with natural sunlight that could introduce some glare depending on the angle of your TV and how your furniture is aligned? Also, you gotta keep in mind, each device is different. The color profile for the PS5, it looks different than what comes out of that HDMI port on the Xbox series. It, that's why you have to customize each HDMI port individually. I really do hope that this guide was beneficial for you guys. I've been recording about 45 minutes of raw footage. Of course, this video won't be that long. It'll probably be condensed or edited down to about a half hour, which is still definitely on the long end of the spectrum. The attention span of people on YouTube is generally very piquito, very short. So hopefully you stuck with me. I think it will be beneficial for you to get your LG TV set up and optimize for either gaming or movies or whatever content you it is that you're consuming. If you did enjoy this guide, liking the video is greatly appreciated and it will also help it to get seen by more people, more LG owners that need their TV set up. Subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of news in the gaming community and industry tutorials just like this video, as well as honest product and peripheral reviews around the gaming space. And I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily, at least most of the time. Peace.